Hey folks, welcome to Hank's True Barbecue. So today we're gonna do a fun experiment with apple cider vinegar versus water. Does it matter which you use when you're spritzing? Now to do this experiment, we're gonna use some, I'm gonna cook up some real nice Iberica ribs. Rich, fatty, full of flavor. So I'm gonna cook one slab on my custom built smoker using a good rub and then we're going to spritz with water versus apple cider vinegar. The whole point of this video is I really wanted to find out does it actually make a difference if you use ACV versus water? Can you actually taste it in the end product? Of course there's a lot of beliefs and well opinions I guess about whether you should use one or the other or apple juice etc and I really wanted to find out for myself. To be honest, I have my own opinions about it, but I thought, why not challenge them? It could be that I, I'm completely wrong, and then it, this video is all for the better in this whole experiment, because I actually don't know what the outcome will be, and there's only one way to do that, and that's to test it. So, my opinion, and we'll see whether I'm right or wrong, and that's going to be really interesting, is that using apple cider vinegar versus water is not going to make a difference, because the number of flavor molecules in is down to the like parts per million so it's not gonna matter but then again quite a few famous barbecue smokehouses use it are they onto something do they know something we don't well let's break that down into every little detail we can so this is gonna be a lot of talk but a lot of cooking and some good tasting in the end I mean regardless of how it turns out we're gonna be ending up with some really good tasty Iberica pork ribs so can't go wrong with that. So where does it all come from actually? Well, I did have the pleasure of meeting Aaron Franklin for a full day's barbecue class at uh, Holy Smoke down south in Sweden. And that was a lot of fun talking to him and being able to pick up a few tips and tricks. Now, what he said actually, and I think this is where the misconception started, is that, well, he does use apple cider vinegar when spritzing briskets, for example. But then he said, well, it was in the middle of the night, as always, when doing overnight cooks. It's like 3 a.m. in the morning. You're, you know, walking around a bit tired, drinking your coffee, making sure all the ribs and the brisket turn out all right. Now, the thing is, he spritzes his ribs with apple cider vinegar, but then he spritzes brisket also with apple cider vinegar. And what he said was that, well, when you purchase apple cider vinegar by the gallon, it's dirt cheap. In fact, it's so cheap that there's no point in having two separate bottles because one with water and one with apple cider vinegar because the whole point is like if you're up 3 a.m. in the morning tending to six big smokers and uh, managing or treating a lot of briskets well then it's going to be kind of easy to mistake one for the other and now since the apple cider vinegar was so cheap you might as well just go apple cider vinegar all the way simply because it's easier regardless of which spray bottle you grab it's always going to be the right one so that's a real good explanation now does that mean you should use apple cider vinegar or actually in the end, does it actually taste different? That's the reason I wanted to do this. So that's what we're gonna find out. I think that should be a real good experiment. So I'm gonna bring the ribs out. We're gonna apply a dry brine right now so you can see. And then tomorrow morning, we're gonna apply the rub. We're gonna smoke them in my smoker using oak wood and we're gonna spritz them every 30 minutes a while into the cook. So why do we spritz at all to begin with? Like, and do you always spritz? Or is it only on different cookers? Now, when talking about different cookers, I mean types of cookers, like an offset smoker, where, as I've stated before, you have a lot higher airflow. Perhaps you need to spray a lot more. If you have a regular kettle with very little airflow, typically I never spritz ribs, etc., etc. So it all depends on the physical construction and the thermodynamics of it all. Now, the whole point of spraying is, of course, adding moisture. But one common misconception is that you add moisture so you don't dry out the meat. Actually, you're adding moisture to the bark. You want to finish, it's like a surface job, if you like, you're making sure the bark is just perfect, not too dry, not too wet. So when you hit the target temp, if it's a brisket, or when it passes the vent test for ribs, for example, you know the bark is just right. But again, meat is 70% water, roughly. Yeah, it's been in the cooker for quite a few hours. All that water is evaporating. If it's a brisket, that happens all through the cook, but a lot through the stall, for example. So when you're spritzing just a few 
milligrams of water on the surface, that's never going to go back into the meat. So again, all you're doing is treating the bark, and making sure it ends up just where you want it, just at the end of the cook. So, and there's nothing wrong with that. It's really important to get that good bark. You don't want it too dry and too crusty. You want it just the right consistency, if you like. So super important, but remember that we're not adding moisture to the meat. We're just adding moisture just at the right level to get the perfect bark. That's what we're doing here. Now the question is when depositing apple cider vinegar as opposed to water, does it actually add flavor? So what about apple juice then? Because that's also a common thing to use in spray bottles. Well, I like apple juice because it adds sugar. So you like deposit sugar, very thin layer, but over time when you're doing quite a few spritzes, like every 30 minutes, and that's good. But I never use regular apple juice. I always use concentrated apple juice because you're gonna add plenty of moisture by using concentrated apple juice also, but a lot more sugar. And that's the whole point of using apple juice. So for me, if I'm using apple juice, I'm using concentrated apple juice. But then in the end, I like it because it adds sugar, but I really can't taste the fact that you spritz with apple juice. And since I can't taste the apple in the apple juice, only the sugar, that leads me to believe that I can't taste the vinegar either. But again, we're gonna find out. Well, enough talk. Here are the ribs. Gorgeous slab of Iberica pork. So let's start trimming these up. Well, actually not trimming, I'm just gonna apply a brine. But let's get started. So time to apply a brine. Uh, good thing this is gonna be left overnight. One teaspoon per kilo. So this is the easy part, but it's gonna amplify flavor. And uh, I don't put anything on the underside, the bone side. I think this is good enough because it's such a thin slab of meat, relatively speaking, compared to a brisket, for example. So this goes into the fridge and I'll see you guys in the morning. We're gonna fire this one up with oak wood, get some good smoke rolling. It's quite cold outside. So I'm guessing I'm gonna to have to fire this one up for a good hour before we can actually start cooking on it. Get all that metal warmed up, get some hot water in the water pan, and then we should be ready to get some smoke rolling. So it's the day after, the ribs have been brining. I'm gonna apply a rub. I'm gonna use my KC Royale pork and poultry rub. I think it's a good match. Just gonna get a good layer on. When applying rub, make sure you keep a distance up because that means you're gonna be able to apply a more even layer. It's really cold today, minus 12, so gonna have to be a good pit master and build a real good fire to keep the smoker hot and running. Not gonna go too heavy today. I think this should be should be all right. Nice. So time to fire up the smoker. So time to get some water in the water pan. I did remove the top shelf to just make things easier. So the smoker is heated up. We're running at a good temp, so I'm gonna drop in the ribs. Time to get some flavor in these. Get the cable out of the way also. All right, that should be good. So now I'm gonna smoke these for at least two hours before we start spritzing. Wanna get some good bark on them beforehand so we have something to spritz on. So when it comes time to spritz, I brought out two spray bottles, the 
pink one contains plain old tap water and this one contains apple cider vinegar. This one's real handy by the way, it's aluminum, it's small, so I think it's real convenient. Anyhow, I'm gonna spray the first half with the ECV and the other one with water. And then we'll keep it rating until the cook is done and then we're gonna do a taste test and see how it turns out. It's gonna be good. Now, due to the cold weather, I'm gonna preheat logs like that on top. And I also have a few inside. Open the firebox door, you can see right here and then on the left hand side also. But there is a real nice clean fire burning, so this is good. So we're two hours in, which is a good head start. Now it's time to start spritzing. Those ribs are looking good. So I'm going to put, see I've put a toothpick in here to separate it, but first goes water and getting the cable out the way. Apple cider vinegar. First spritz done. Uh, I'll be back in, I guess, well, 30 to 40 minutes and we'll check again. Just a few words on fire management. So I have these big logs right here, getting them proper warmed up. The big one right there, well, thick at least, not long, but still hasn't kicked in quite yet. I'm waiting for it to kick in in another 10 minutes or so. But in the meantime, I'm adding a few thinner splits to keep the temp up, keep the inertia, or I mean the momentum going. Uh, so it's all trying to plan ahead and see when is each split or log you add, you're gonna add to the temp curve, trying to guesstimate. And I guess that's a key of a pit master's job. So now I can, you can see I have a pretty clean burning fire. Flames are leaning in. This one's getting ready to go, but not quite yet. And given the fact that it's so cold, I'm actually gonna add another split right here. Now that should give me another 20 minutes before I need to add one of these. So it's time for a second spritz, but as you can see, this end is getting a bit more color than this end. So I'm actually gonna rotate it. So we have apple cider vinegar here and water there, and now I'm going to flip it. That's looking good. Get my... Now I'm spraying water on the left hand side instead. Get some apple cider vinegar and put it on the other half. Done deal. More smoke. Just check the grease bucket. There's quite a bit of fat buildup in there, so it's sure doing its job, which is perfect because it doesn't create a mess below. That would be quite a lot more fat, of course, if we cooked a brisket, but still. So time for the third spritz. Oh man, this is looking good. I'm gonna put water here on the left hand side and apple cider vinegar right here. They're looking like they're getting close to done. I'm gonna have to check. Not quite yet, but oh yeah. Almost. Give it another 30 minutes, but it's looking good. Now the ribs have been on for four hours exactly and I've been cooking quite hot like 130 to 140 Celsius so I want to check that they're done and the only way to check safely and securely that the ribs are done is to pick them up like that it's called the bend test grab three or four ribs and pick them up and if that meat starts cracking uh, splitting separating you know it's tender enough and this sure is so it's time to Slice these up and give it a good taste test. Now again, we had water here and apple cider vinegar on this side. So I'm gonna cut out one rib on each side and give it a good taste. the old brisket sword to do this. It's going to help me slice all the way through. So again, water on the left hand side. 
That's looking pretty darn juicy, I would say. Very nice, I'm gonna cut out the rib right here. And I'm gonna go one in on the apple cider vinegar side. So here we have the contestants. I mean, regardless, this looks like a real good set of ribs. Nice caramelization, nice color, super moist and juicy. Ain't no losing side really in this competition. Man, this is going to be good. All right, let's try the water sprayed side or spritzed. Mm. Real tasty ribs. Gonna get a napkin out. Man, these are really tender. I mean, I'm Birka ribs, they're just superb. All that extra meat and a bit of extra fat, perfect. I'm gonna put that down. Now I'm really curious to see if I can taste the apple cider vinegar. If I can, it would be good because I like the vinegary touch. The vinegar really helps cut through rich fatty meats, so it would be good. But let's see. Hmm. I'm, I gotta say, I'm not not really picking up any vinegar at all. Like I said, it is surface treatment. A lot of it runs off when the meat is sweating and everything, but... Well, I guess my prejudice really, or predefined notion that the apple cider vinegar doesn't taste is true. I don't know what you guys feel, how if you use it, I mean... If you spray with apple cider vinegar and you really like the end product, by all means continue to spray with apple cider vinegar. I just really just had to find out for myself, does it actually make a difference or not? I gotta say though, I know that like for example, when Aaron Franklin and other people cook their ribs, they don't only spritz, but they also wrap in butcher's paper and put more apple cider vinegar in that package. Perhaps that makes a difference. Regardless, there's no right or wrong way. I mean, if the end product tastes good, that's all good in my book. This was a fun comparison to cook to do. It was fun firing up one of my custom built offset smokers. I mean, I can't just build them, I gotta show you how to use them also. This one behaved perfectly. Really nice temp, good for cold weather cooking, all oak wood, pretty high temps. I did that because I wanted to bark up real good and also because this is a relatively short cook compared to a brisket or a pork, but I also wanted to make sure that there was a reason to spritz so we get some bark and some caramelization so it doesn't look like it's all been in the oven for example anyhow i'm gonna feast on some real good ribs thanks for watching remember to hit the subscribe button if you like what you're seeing and i'll see you guys next episode